Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. Well, as you can see, I'm uh, on the road again, and as you can also see, it's uh, quite dark outside. Those of you who are uh, seeing this on the video, I'm sure the question is popping up right off the bat is, uh, why would you do a video in the darkness? Indeed. Why would I do a video in the darkness? I'm getting back on the freeway here for just a short time. Uh, I've left uh, Oxford all oh, about an hour ago. I'm uh, heading east on Interstate 70. I'm about to get off here at uh, Route 56 and head a little bit north and east so I can slide into the old homestead kind of through the back roads. I enjoy that. It's uh, a bit of a slower pace. It's a quarter after nine, getting late. I should be in probably by 10 or 10.30. Uh, generally speaking, when I'm out in the road and I'm kind of enjoying the presence of the Lord and just uh, relaxing, I guess, is the best word to say it. Uh, I don't really care too much about time. There's, uh, there's no reason for me to be in any earlier, no reason any later. It doesn't really make any difference to me. So I like taking the back roads and I can kind of just relax. Uh, and it's a better time because there were uh, some things I wanted to speak to you about and that's, uh, that's the main reason for the, uh, for the darkness here. Because that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. I had thought about doing this uh, yesterday evening and almost did. But I just never could quite uh, could quite get it right, and uh, I understand I understand the timing, and and the timing just wasn't there. The message hadn't quite been formulated. It isn't formulated yet. Uh, I have only the barest note right here. I have a scripture that I wanted to read at some point, but there, other than that. going in the spirit as it said but several things kind of focus together in my mind today uh, that told me the time was here to talk about this uh, this morning Zeph made a posting asking if we would believe that uh, they were having an orgy celebrating the massacre as it occurred in Benghazi of those who worked as our diplomats and quite frankly who also worked for the beast. They were expendable. They knew it going in. They simply didn't expect it to happen then. But that's that's beside the point. I get I get off and sidetracked when I'm sometimes out on the road here. I'm watching for my turn which is coming up right here. If you remember, I talked about this great darkness coming. I talked about the fact that these men who died in Benghazi were blood sacrifices for the retention of power by those who held power at the behest of darkness itself. Yes, my friend. We are in the grip, the advancing grip of a darkness, which brings me, well, I guess before I get to that, there was something else that I heard today as I was listening to the radio going out. I 
sometimes pick up uh, Catholic radio and uh, they can have some quite interesting discussions on there that I enjoy very much. It's the, uh, especially when they talk about the ancient fathers and that. These people are well versed in uh, some of these men and, and, and I too have read them and so I enjoy listening to the thoughts of these people. But today on a couple of occasions from a couple of different sources, they talked about a dream that the Pope had had, I guess last month sometime that his successor would die in prison and that his successor after that would die a martyr. And the reason I, I bring these up tonight is because last week, it was on Saturday night I remember, not this, not this uh, past Saturday night, uh, I ask you to excuse me that are watching on the video. It's late at night, I'm on the way home. I've long since taken my teeth out. Uh, so excuse me with the fact that uh, you might have some problems with my wording. Those that, that listen to my podcast have probably become used to my slurrings by now. They don't seem to uh, be a problem. Nobody ever has complained anyway. Uh, <laughs> although there might always be a first. Well, anyway, last Saturday night, uh, about 10 days ago, Saturday passed, I had a fitful night. I had a recurring kind of dream that kept coming back in intensity over, I don't know how many times, over and over. And each time, as, as I felt the malevolence of an evil gather near, I, I instinctively woke up, but each time, as, as if it was reinforcement, I remembered, and I saw more, and, and what I saw was things that, had, I guess, had meaning that would make sense to me, in the sense that I've always been a, a student of history, I've read and studied a great deal, uh, and done some writing on history, and, uh, I saw, going before me, armies, specific armies, marching. There were Roman legions, I remember that, out of the past. There were armies, they were almost all from the past. There were the troops of Napoleon. There were the Germans, the Italians of World War II. All things out of my childhood and out of my past that I remembered. And I saw them all marching. There were the Soviets and the Americans. All of the troops from the wars of the past hundred years and then some. And there were crowds. Crowds cheering, waving jumping up and down, shouting, all of the things you would expect at a military parade of some sort. Whether they were going out to battle, whether they were returning home from conquest, I, I could not tell. Only what I saw. And as the people cheered, in the distance a storm, a storm began to brew. And it crept closer, and as it got closer, it, it was a darkness. A darkness that was cold enough to be felt, and thick enough almost to be cut. And there was a lightning like a storm, but it wasn't a lightning that touched the ground. Cloud to cloud, I guess. Back and forth like that, like what we used to call heat lightning. Back when I was a kid and I remember sitting out back with my, my grandparents, my grandmothers actually, and uh, that's what they would call it when there'd be lightning from cloud to cloud and no rain and all that, they called it heat lightning. But it was more than a storm. It was a malevolence, an evil. became as it crept forward 
deprivation. I find myself searching for the words because the fear and the, the evil that I could feel as this darkness crept forward kept making me want to wake up. And as the dreams intensified that night, I guess, I don't mean intensified, maybe just as I would wake and then I'd go back to sleep and it would happen again. Never could I quite get through the thick, pasty malevolence, the terror that I felt around me. Not within me necessarily, but everywhere around me. The sheer presence of an evil. But as I woke up, I was looking down as I was, I don't know whether I am fleeing from it or just up above it, there were lights. There were lights. I noticed that. Some lights went out. Others stayed on. And where some went out, others sprang up. But through the darkness, my friend, there were always the lights. Except that's always where I woke up that whole night. And I wondered about it, and I've wondered about it a lot since then, but it's not come back. There's not been another dream like it <laughs> before or after. That one night, Saturday night, and I've thought about that all this week, uh, and I've thought of what I should say and, and how to say it, and I'll probably mess this up really good. Uh, and forget some of the things I was trying to tell you. But I see a time of darkness coming, my friends. I think most of us know it. I see... When I chat with people, not chat, I don't really chat anymore, but there's messages you see back and forth to uh, things that people post online and, and as I react with these people and comment and read their comments back uh, I get a sense of an inner restlessness and an inner turmoil within people an inner worry because they sense there is something ahead and I think many of us have taken those worries and, and, and focused them into this political race that's going on right now now there are those who have been called by God. To work in these fields. To speak. To talk. To, to bring out. To do whatever. I've never done that. I don't, I don't try to get involved in politics. When I do I kind of feel dirtied and tainted. And I, I want to withdraw. And I usually do after a week or two. Uh, and I've done so in a sense on, on Facebook here. Uh, because I begin to feel dirty and tainted. But there are those of God who exhort people, who preach and pray and, and work for what they believe and what they know is the will of Almighty God in their lives, and they are right. But what I have seen, what I have seen in my dream, I don't think it matters who wins this, this election coming up, my friends. 
I think the darkness is embedded all around us as we stand. I think it is but a breath away. It is throughout our culture. It is throughout our business world. It is throughout the world of the church. It is throughout the world of entertainment. There has been and is now a creeping malevolence that is sapping the light and the strength away from our society and who is pushing the lambs of God with worries and fears that they need not carry. Times are coming, my friends. The part of my dream that I saw with the marching armies I cannot say I'm not a prophet sometimes I dream sometimes I get flash visions I don't always know exactly everything sometimes other people they understand more than I do when I when I explain what happened but even there I'm always pretty much as awkward as I am now of course I'm partly trying to pay attention to the road let me see here I need to make a turn around here If you've guessed it, yes, I was so intense in trying to think of what I was going to say that I missed my turn, but it's in a dark spot and I couldn't put my brakes on because there were people around and I didn't want to hit my brakes when I saw it because there were fellows behind me and that can cause problems sometimes. I guess what I'm trying to say, my friends, is that dark times are on the horizon. I see the witness to it everywhere I look. I hear it in the voice of a man I know as a prophet of God. I hear it in the dreams of men that I know are false prophets. I see it in the posts and on the faces of those I come in contact with. It is a general acknowledgement. uncertain times are in the offing. I sure feel like I'm rambling on about this. I guess what I need to get to is the point in the dream that says the lights. My friends, we are those lights. Those of you who fear fear and who are worried about what will be the outcome of all of this. My friends, this worry, this trying to prepare, this trying to build up a hedge of protection around yourself, all of these things are manifestations of the flesh. Of the flesh. As this darkness comes away, comes upon all of us around us, as it begins to creep in, even into our families, there will be no place to flee, my friends. There will be no place to store provision, save one. The Lamb of God can flee only to the living God. Provision from the Lamb of God can come always and only from the living God. As we go into these periods, periods of testing, these periods of trial, there is our strength. There only is our strength. My friends, I tell you this all the time. I've seen for some time what is coming and I, I don't just have the words I wish I knew to speak the things I want to say. And some of the things I see that I want to say I cannot say. I just don't know how 
to explain what, what some of this is, is. Well, there I go. I'm, I'm getting into areas I'm not supposed to go. My friends, if you feel fear in your heart, you are looking at this from the wrong perspective. You are seeing it through the eyes of the flesh. Only the flesh feels fear. Look in the eyes of the Spirit. In the eyes of the Spirit who is known and filled with the joy and the power of the Lord. Who understands the strength of walking with the living God. And you will welcome these days. For you will understand that as the darkness comes upon us. As we are connected to the living flame, the light within us will intensify around us. We will become what we were always intended to be. We will become the infection within the darkness. It will be us as the lights of the living God who in our prayers, in our words, in our resistance, in our mere witnessing and strength of surviving all that they can do, as weak as we are, in the power of nothing but the living God. My friends, from all creation, God could have put us any place at all in the timeline of history. For some reason, and I don't believe it was an accident, I don't believe for a minute, we were chosen for these days. The light of God that glows within us is now sufficient. I tell you in the name of Almighty God, in the name of Yeshua Christ Jesus our Lord, it shall remain sufficient. Slay your fear as you were slew your flesh. Fear can only serve to dim your light and perhaps expose expose you to dangers that you might have not have seen otherwise you know as I stumble through this I, I, I just I see the dream. I see the knowledge. But people, they don't, they don't hear, you know, they, they turn this on and they say, oh wow, that is interesting, that's nice. And then they dismiss it. You know, if, if, if I could tell somebody and walk up to somebody and I could say, here, here's this video, this podcast, you can watch this. Or I can give you this $100 bill. This podcast is just a simple old man trying to explain visions and dreams he's had from Almighty God about what is going on and what is about to happen. And that God has told him the love and the strength of Almighty God is sufficient. That if you draw near, draw close, walk as one with Almighty God. Slay the flesh. Let the old men die. That you will pass through this darkness as a flaming light of Almighty God. Bringing blessing to all those around you. 
those who contact you, those who pass within the darkness. They will search for you. And under God's hand, they will not find you. Though some they will. The essence of it is, my friends, you are a dead man, living, living in the power of Almighty God, working for God, flaming away the light for God, without fear, without worry. across their traps, their snares. The scorpions will not touch you. All the promises are there, my friends, in His Word. Now, if I said that I had a video where an old man tried to kind of explain this to you in a very inept kind of way, or I'd give you a hundred bucks. Well, almost all of you, I suppose, would take the hundred bucks and run, and and that would be that. And, and I got to tell you how I feel inside of me is good riddance to all of you that would. There might be a few, one, two, ten, maybe a few more that might hear this and want this message because they understood what it was I'm trying to say because it's not me that's saying it. My friends, rejoice at what we see coming. I don't care about the politics. I don't believe it will matter. I think one is just a different way, a different path into the darkness. For without the light of the living God, how can any man direct another to a light? <laughs> Truth be told, neither of these men are godly men. One might be more capable than another. But I fear what has come and what is even now among us has too far too great a momentum for a man who does not know the living God. And neither of these men do. through your transmit to you I guess is, is how I feel about all of this coming on. I have no fear whatsoever. <laughs> I don't worry one little bit. I've lived for pretty near 30 years at the hand of the living God. I had children to raise. I didn't have time to do a lot of things. I trusted in Almighty God and God provided. That's the one thing I knew how to do in the midst of all the trauma and other things I went through. And God proved over and over again His faithfulness for me. And I believe I will be here healthy and alive as long as God has a purpose and a reason for me to be here according to His will and His plan. And then when that plan says it's time to come to an end, I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't have much fear to it anymore. You see, my friends, it's not just the wisdom from the Word of God or even from the Spirit of God and the knowledge that I've obtained. No, my friends, it's, it's coming to know Him over these past 25, 30 years as the walk intensified and became closer and then as he opened me up and told me I had to begin speaking out to people of what I see and what I know. And this dream was a reminder. <sighs> Some things I just don't feel comfortable going into right now. The 
message I want to leave with you, my friends. Fret not about who wins, who loses the election. Don't worry about your retirement, your savings accounts, your mortgages. Worry about stoking the fires of your flame. Work about, worry about intensifying the light of the living God within you. For the only enemy of the encroaching darkness and the only power which this encroaching darkness can never stamp out is the light. to you here as I close. I've got somebody right behind me that makes it uncomfortable for me. So bear with me for a minute. Ah, oh, good, he's turning on. There we go. Let me move it over so it's out of the way. I will lead you, or I will lead them. He, this is God, my friends. I should put a setting on it. Now, I'm not going to tell you where it's at in the Word. Why? Because I want you to go look it up. I think there's no greater discipline than learning to look things up in the Word of God. Sometimes you find the right one, sometimes you find pure jewels by accident. Although we both know it's not really an accident. Let me get turned here where I can stop and I'll read this. God is talking to His people, my friends. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. My friends, if you are a child of the living God, if you know Him, if you walk with Him, speak with Him, love Him, then believe Him! Put away the worries of the flesh. Prepare the walls and the fires of the spirit, my friends. For truly I do not know how long it will be before this darkness descends completely or thoroughly, however you want to put it. Though it is true it will never never totally succeed. It will never extinguish the light of the living God. Is it part of the end times? <laughs> of course. As Jeff told you once before, the end times goes on for a long time. A long time, my friends. If you read the Word of God, you'll see that Paul and Peter both pronounced the times in which they lived these last days, the end times. The truth is, according to the Word of God, the end times began at the glorification of our Lord. It began the last days. We've been in the last days. Darkness has come. Attempts have been made with the timing of God. All things, my friends, all things in God's plan must come to pass. But look expectantly for the path which God will lead you through. Do not fear the darkness, for He sends you in to be a light. Yes, I don't. I can't go any further than that, my friends. The light has no fear. The dead man does not worry. And he doesn't care if they kill him because he's already dead. <laughs> the 
those of you on the video, I suppose you could ignore this part. Music for the podcast tonight will be provided, as always, by Zepp and Trish Daniel. We'll open with Do You Get It? And we will close with Simple Wrong. Zeph music can be found at Reverb Nation slash Zedja.com and all of his uh, all of his work his written work his books his uh, podcasts and videos can be found or sourced at uh, his main site ZephDaniel.Popbean.com Excuse me if my words begin to get a little weak or slurry I bumped the microphone there like a, like an idiot. <laughs> well, it's been a very long day, my friends. It's a quarter to ten. And I loaded up this morning at uh, all about a quarter to eight. But you know what? I absolutely love being out here doing what I do. Cruising the back roads. I speak with God. I worship God out here. I love God out here. And out here, I have the freedom to stop and enjoy all that God can be to me. My prayer. Walking out in the field, appreciating the beauty that I see now because I understand so much of it is about to be devastated. My friends, learn to walk with God on a daily, hourly basis. Learn to worship Him in all that you do. Learn to trust Him as a child. Some of you may have seen the little video I posted of my uh, granddaughter Rachel. A silly little thing. But it demonstrates a childlike innocence and trust and joy without any fear or worry. And why does she not have any fear or worry? Because she knows that she's in the loving hands of a family infused with the loving power of Almighty God. Watch the video. This image should be on your heart, my friends. On all of you. There we go, you're right. Too much talking, I missed my turn again. <laughs> I've got to stop this, I guess, my friends. With the faith of a child, the excitement, the love, the honest expression of a child, we enter into the glory of the kingdom of Almighty God, my friends. And with that, I'm going to just say good night as soon as I can hit the mouse to turn this thing off. Good night, my friends. Good night.